Starting with a rather somber story, uh, unfortunately. Um, so, responding to the tragic arson attack on Kyoto Animation's first studio building back in July, wow, long time ago, uh, which was allegedly started using gasoline, uh, the Japanese government plans to enact stricter rules for purchase of the chemical. Uh, Japan's Fire and Disaster Management Agency will now require gas stations and other gas sellers to conduct ID checks on customers and ask them the reason for their purchase. That sounds inconvenient. Definitely. Uh, the agency has pre had previously suggested voluntary uh, ID checks back in July, um, but after some customers refused, the rule will now be mandatory. Oh. Yeah. Um, the agency plans to implement these new rules starting in February, so a little while to go. And said it hopes these measures will encourage gasoline sellers to report any suspicious customers to the authorities. We certainly hope so. Although it's not going to stop them from lying. Yeah, no. I'm putting it in my lawnmower. Mm -hmm. my, uh, yeah. What, what's sad is this feels like it, it's an attempt to encourage the gasoline sellers to pay more attention to who's coming in and who's, who's getting stuff. But Mandatory. Yeah, being mandatory and also asking folks to do it isn't probably going to help that much. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if they're... If somebody's going to do something wrong, they're going to lie about the gasoline. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science to figure that. <laughs> the, the intent, the intent, the intent is good-natured, but the in, the application of it just yeah. lacks teeth. Yeah, it just um, inconveniences people. Yeah. Um, also, kind of odd because it's not like there's been a string of dozens of gasoline attacks. Right. So I don't know. They may be worried about copycat, you know, attacks as well. No, that's, so that's true. Um, anyway, sad, but moving on. Um, new anime announcements. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Several more uh, upcoming anime. The official Twitter account for the role-playing app game On Myoji hmm. announced an anime adaptation this week. It'll be called On Myo Hyaki Monogatari, or 100 Yin and Yang Demon Stories. <laughs> wow. And it's set to premiere in 2020. The Twitter announcement also included a short promo video and revealed the voice cast for the story's main characters. Now, this game was developed by Chinese developer NetEase and released in China in 2016, then in Japan in 2017, and globally in English in 2018. Um, a Chinese animation based on the game was released in April 2018, which premiered in Japan in July of this year. So, what that tells me is they're pushing this hard. Um, they they want to get this out there. Um, the game takes place in a time when demons and humans coexisted and tells the story of a gifted group of humans with the power to connect the two worlds, the titular on Myoji, and their fight against the evil spirits of the underworld. Now, here's the interesting thing. On Myoji is a Japanese term. Hmm. In a game from a Chinese developer. Huh. That doesn't happen too often. No. no it's, it, it, it is... Odd. Um, yeah. it's cool. Um, you know, Japanese culture, certainly. Um, certainly spreading. Um, then, uh, game and animation company Tokyo Toon is producing a, a new multimedia project entitled Marco and Galaxy Dragon. Um, the project is planned to have a game and an anime, though the anime is set to appear only within the game itself and on a Blu-ray package with physical versions of the game. Oh, that's an interesting distribution. Yeah, you gotta get the game to get the anime. The game itself is set to debut on Steam in February in Japanese, English, and Chinese. Again. China. Yeah. Um, interestingly, while the planner and scriptwriter is the same for both mediums, the game and the anime have two different character designers, and their style is wildly different. Um, let me see if I can um, show y'all, um, because I always have an issue with this. Nope, not that. Um, actually, that might work. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, so that is what it looks like. The characters you see, you know, sitting on top of all of these uh, TVs, mm -hmm. are the characters from the game. The Im the images you see on the TV are what they're going to look like in the anime. So the little boxes. Yeah, the, the little boxes with the little like um, panty and stocking style character designs. <laughs> um, that's what the anime is going to look like, but the game's going to look like all these cute girls. So, hey. It's a thing. It's a way of doing yeah. things, um, but kind of, kind of interesting. So, sounds very innovative. I, yeah. I haven't seen anybody else do something quite like that. Definitely. Um, so yeah, those are the same characters. Uh, Tokyo Tune is also streaming short clips from the anime on YouTube. So if you're interested, go check those out. So you can you can find it and see it. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, an anime adaptation has been announced announced for Michi Ichiho's 
Yes, ka no ka hanbun ka. Uh, which is a, a boy's love light novel series. Uh, the novel follows Kei Kunikida, a popular TV announcer who, despite maintaining a perfect outward facade, spends his time inwardly cursing everyone around him as incompetent idiots. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is something we can all relate to, at least occasionally. Uh, the novels began publication in 2014, and have topped several rankings of BL and light novels over the years since their debut. Um, then game developer Spicy Tales, a lot of game-based uh, yeah. stuff here, uh, announced on Thursday it'll be launching a crowdfunding campaign for an anime adaptation of its World End Economica visual novel. Uh, the campaign will launch on November 14th, and the company noted in the announcement that at that time it will reveal the reason why an anime project is being launched now, uh, even though the final episode of the game debuted back in 2013. That's a little ways ago. Yeah. Uh, visual, novel, visual novel publisher Sekai Project released the trilogy on Steam in English beginning in 2014, and announced in 2016 the game was going to be released for PlayStation 4 and PS Vita. Uh, though this release was delayed uh, past its original 2017 debut date, they stated in July that they are still in the process of finalizing the port. Uh, the three-part visual novel is set in the far future, 16 years after humans have begun colonizing the moon. As described by Sekai Project, a young boy named Haru has been chasing his wildest dream to stand where no man has stood before. <laughs> to do so, he needs capital. A ludicrous <laughs> amount of capital. What, place, what better place to get that much money than by using the stock market? Wow. Um... That's quite interesting. Um, yeah, I'm curious why they uh, waited that long. That's yeah, uh, and crowdfunding. And crowdfunding. Um, Were they waiting till they had the capital? Is yeah, that yeah apparently <laughs> the ludicrous capital. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wonder because I mean, crowdfunding has been sort of hit and miss for anime. Um, some big successes, some that just kind of fizzled. Yeah. Um, certainly not the you know runaway success um, as in other markets. I wonder. So I wonder why they why they're taking stock in the crowd. Yeah. Fund. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we'll find out November fourteenth. Apparently, um, the Anime Tourism Association, meanwhile, held a press conference on Tuesday to reveal their twenty twenty list of noteworthy anime related tourist spots. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Want to go to Japan? Radar up. Let's go. <laughs> the Anime 88 is named after Shikoku's 88 Temple Pilgrimage, Japan's most famous Buddhist pilgrimage route. Uh, though the Anime pilgr Pilgrimage list actually contains 137 locations, wow. with, with 111 a anime setting locations, and 26 anime-related institutions or events. I'd love to do them all. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the list is based on an online poll held by the Tourism Association's website over the summer. This is interesting. The association also revealed statistics about those who contributed to the poll. 60% of this year's voters were from outside Japan. Hey. The top five foreign territories were China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, the U.S., and Thailand. Hmm. Wow. Um, no Europe, no South America. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah. Um, Western countries have seen a particular increase in participation in the yearly poll, with the U.S., U.K., and Canada all making this year's top ten. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still... Um, two city mayors also spoke about anime's effect on their tourism at this press conference. The mayor of the small town of Tonosho, which is featured in Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san, revealed that at first the town's residents weren't very familiar with the anime, no big shock there, um, but came to know about it through the many new visitors it brought to the town. Why are these people coming to see our place? They saw it in an anime? What? Um, the mayor of Komatsu City also commented that thanks to the anime Girly Air Force... The number, of, the number of visitors to his city tripled. Oh, wow. Man. Um, the, full list, the full list is available in English. So if you want to check out the anime Pokemon site yourself, find the link in the Geek Archaeology Discord down there in the description box below. Um, cool. Now, a title that's on, on the lips of all anime fans everywhere, Slayers, <laughs> is getting a 30th anniversary event. The classic fantasy light novel series, Slayers, will be hosting its 30th anniversary event in March of 2020. Uh, the Slayers 30th anniversary event, if you don't gather, everything will explode event. <laughs> Love that. Um, will be held at Tokyo Dome City Hall. It will feature a talk show event with three of the main voice actors from the anime series, including Megumi Hayashibara, 
voice actor of the protagonist Lena Inverse, uh, Marie Kawamura, who voiced Naga the Serpent, and Yasunori Matsumoto, the voice of Guri Gabriev. Um, by the way, Megumi Hayashibara is also a Rei Ayanami, um, you know, Bell Dandy. I, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, she, she's a major, major, uh, and a, like a successful singer. Um, Fantasia Bunko began publishing the novels in 1990. Um, between the main novel series and the 1991 side story series, the franchise has inspired five TV anime series, two OVAs, and five anime films, plus multiple manga adaptations. Wow. That's a franchise, right? That's there. a franchise. Mmm. Dang. Um, finally, Katakawa's monthly New Type magazine has announced the results of their New Type Anime Awards 2018 2019. Yeah. readers of monthly new type and other anime fans vote for their favorite works in a series of categories selecting from anime that released between the summer of 2018 and the spring of 2019 anime seasons mm. uh, the year's, this year's winner for best work in the TV and streaming category was Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba and best work in theatrical screening was Studio Trigger's Promare uh, characters from Demon Slayer also topped the lists of both, both best male and best female characters in fact, most of the other categories were won by staff or cast from Demon Slayer, with a couple more wins for Promari in the mix, and one top prize for the new Uta no Prinsama movie, uh, Best Soundtrack. Um, either Demon Slayer was this year's best new anime by far, or lots of its fans read new type. Um, either way, <laughs> congratulations to Demon Slayer, Promare, and all the winners. Yay. Always neat to see. Um, and, I mean, as we were saying earlier, I, I think, you know, any time anything's big and new, it tends to kind of sweep a lot of these sorts of things. Fans are really excited. Yeah. Um, but really, really cool. The bugs. Nice. Yeah. 